In this video, we're going to be using statistics, research, and logic to show how the gun controller's response to the March 27th, 2023 Covenant Presbyterian Church school shooting is absolutely insane, wrong, and vile. Let's get into it. So for those of you who may not have heard, there was a school shooting, yet another one. This one took place in Nashville, Tennessee. There were three teachers that were killed, three children, young children that were killed, and then the shooter as well also was killed. Unclear right now, from my perspective, whether or not it was police shooting or suicide. Frankly, I don't really care. The bottom line is we have six innocent lives taken. In response to this, the White House Press Secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre, said, quote, how many more children have to be murdered? before Republicans in Congress will step up and act to pass the assault weapons ban, to close loopholes in our background check system, or to require the safe storage of guns. We need to do something, end quote. We're going to start out by going through a gun control fact check, and then we're going to be talking about the location. And again, we're going to be sprinkling some different pieces of evidence throughout. First, the gun control fact check. Gun controllers are once more trying to use this as grounds for universal background check. The shooter passed a background check. What the does background checks have to do with this? The White House is going to try to use this to push safe storage laws? What the does safe storage laws, which by the way, is code for victim disarmament by forcing people to store firearms that are absolutely disassembled, oftentimes separated in different locations of the house and locked up in safes from even the ammunition, thereby making firearms absolutely inaccessible and inoperable when home invaders decide to strike. What do any of these things have to do with this case that took place on March 27th? They're also trying to push for an assault weapons ban, Here's the interesting thing here. Um, don't worry, we're gonna unload with the statistics in just a moment. And I wanna be very clear that while I'm gonna be talking about Democrats right now, that I'm not picking a left right side in any of this. I don't really care about that. I'm speaking to principles, not teams, okay? So if you think this is some sort of video about cheering for this team or that team, it isn't. This is talking about the principles that everyone should be able to unite behind. But right now we're talking about Democrats. Democrats point to the increased use of what they call assault style weapons in mass shootings as a reason to change existing laws to ban these so-called assault style weapons. Of course, assault style weapons, typically they go by different features of the gun, how it's held, the amount of uh, rounds that they hold, all that kind of stuff. First, some statistics. Handguns, by the way, were used in 78% of mass shootings, linked to that study in the description box below. Rifles to include all rifles, but we're just going to say all rifles, let alone semi-automatics like AR-15s, were used in 29% of mass shootings. AR-15s are involved in less homicides and deaths in the United States each year than lawnmowers, bees, ladders, deer, swimming pools, and falling out of bed. And it's not even close, by the way. Autoerotic asphyxiation, by the way, causes two to three times more deaths in the United States each year than AR-15s. AR-15s rank just above buckets when it comes to a list of obscure causes of death of Americans each and every year. If you're wondering what the total number of deaths are in the United States via homicide at AR-15s, we're looking right around that 60 number, give or take. Obviously, it varies from each year. Link in the description box below. So AR-15s, not exactly the issue here, but that doesn't change the fact that the anti-gun control want to push this. This is similar to what we see all across the United States each year, where if there's some sort of crime that involves whatever it is, a handgun, a shotgun, next thing you know, City Hall is trying to ban 50 caliber guns, which of course had absolutely nothing to do with anything. Anti-gunners are always making the logical left turn or right turn or whatever the case may be. But the point is, is that their turn is absolutely divorced from reality and their solutions have no root in statistics, background, or logic. What the anti-victim press secretary is admitting though, is that the status quo doesn't work and we need to change. The problem is that the statistics do not fit her narrative. The narrative here is not about what weapons were used. It's actually about the locations that we keep seeing being selected. And we even have in this particular case from Nashville, Tennessee, a look into the killer's perverse mindset, easy, helpless victims without adequate defense. 
Let's talk about the location. This is a quote found in the description box below from Chief Drake, who was giving a press conference involving this situation. Chief Drake said that the attack was targeted and that the attacker had been considering targeting another location, which was not identified, and pay attention to this, but apparently decided not to because of the level of security around it, end quote. I'll repeat that for the slow gun control advocates in the back, quote, but apparently decided not to because of the level of security around it, end quote. The shooter in Nashville mass shooting apparently preferred to target another target, or at least was strongly considering it, but decided not to because it was too well defended as compared to the Covenant School. Defended by what? Background checks? Safe storage laws? Strong language, number two pencils, detention slips and hall passes, or defended by weapons that can shoot back. You know, speaking as a former state prosecutor and criminal defense attorney, over the course of my career, I've unfortunately had more than ample opportunity to speak to some people who've done some pretty vile things in their past. People with armed robberies, home invasions on their record, and so forth. They call into the office, and though they may not become clients, I'll just strike up conversations about them when they're talking about what they've gone to prison for and this and that. And one of the things I always love to ask them is, well, what made you choose this particular store, or this particular home, or those particular people in order to rob, to attack, to burglarize, you name it? The answer is universal, and you can find it in the pages of what I think is going to come out as the shooter's manifesto in this case. They look for people who are disarmed and helpless and who will not offer resistance. That is what evil looks for. And by the way, the statistics back me up on that because between 2009 and 2016, one firearm researcher, John Lott, discovered that approximately 98.4% of mass shootings took place in gun-free zones. And if you're watching this and you're going, no, 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 that study was debunked, I realize that the Washington Post, which of course is definitely perspective-based journalism, which frankly all journalism is perspective-based, so I don't care about that. They went through the exact same math that John Lott put out there, and they said, no, 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 no. It's not 98.4% of mass shootings take place in gun-free zones. It's 86%. Fine. 86%, 98%, who cares? Either way, the overwhelming majority takes place in gun-free zones. And yeah, I understand. Maybe you've been paying attention to the news recently or you've been watching gun control advocating politicians saying, oh, only 7% or only 10% or 12%, whatever number they've gerrymandered to come up with, that's the amount of mass shootings that take place in gun-free zones. Well, let me tell you, by the way, how they're getting those new numbers, those numbers that have no basis in reality, is because they've utterly redefined, without telling you, by the way, they've utterly redefined the definition of a mass shooting to include domestics and all sorts of other things like gang-on-gang -gang violence where there's three or four shooters involved at the scene as they're shooting out over some sort of uh, drug gang control territory, okay? Mass shootings, as you down the lens think of them and as I think of them, that's, choose your number, 86, 96, 98%, all this is happening in mass shootings in theaters, schools, and malls across the country each and every year. Just look across, just Google mass, for, mass uh, shooting. Where, where do you see these things taking place? Schools, movie theaters, and malls. There's a reason why we call these school shootings. They are happening in gun-free zones. The solution here is right in front of us. Number one, we've got to recognize the fact that there's no such thing as legislating away evil. Homicide, by the way, has been illegal for quite some time, and yet people keep doing it. But I will note that on January 11th of 2023, a Tennessee lawmaker filed a bill to allow teachers to carry concealed in guns on campus. And while that may not be a perfect solution in a perfect world, that may be a perfect solution in the world that we find ourselves in. Please consider clicking like, subscribe, comment, and share to share the message around in this video if you wanna see it go out there and comment below what you think is the solution here. What am I getting right? What am I getting wrong? As always, we will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.